Well, we actually have been steadily decreasing risk in our portfolios over the past year. And when trade talks disintegrated in May, we took our overweight, our longstanding overweight inequities to neutral. At the time, that seemed maybe a little premature, maybe a little too defensive. But in reality, it was in anticipation of this heightened volatility that we're seeing today. So we are seeing an environment that is deteriorating globally, particularly in manufacturing. And I think it's important to point out that the fall in yields that we're seeing is because of not only some weakness in the U.S., but really global weakness. Um, and we had German industrial production come out today at negative 5% on a year-over-year -year basis, which is consistent with what we saw in the 2012-2013 economy-wide recession. So this is something that is expressing global weakness. Um, and so we have been a little bit more cautious, but I don't think you can get too defensive because tariffs can come off at any time. All right, so Tom Lee, the man who on August the 2nd told me to quote back up the truck and buy the pullback. You feel that confident about that today, Tom? Uh, I do. I think people are getting a chance to buy it lower. Um, I do think markets are grappling with this re new regime of, hey, what if rates go below 1%? And I know it's coming up in our conversations with clients. And it is kind of a risk-off rethink at the moment. But lower rates means corporate bond yields might go to sub-2. That's a big drop in cost of capital for businesses. I think it's going to drive an M&A boom. You know, mortgages can drop into the 2% range. That would be quite bullish for the U.S. consumer. So I think that this is going to be one of these moments that we look back in the last 18 years and say, look, is this 7% drawdown ringing the top or is it a huge buy a, a buying opportunity? And I think it's a buying opportunity. You realize, though, if yields keep falling the way they are, it's going to be hard to make a bullish case. I mean, sentiment's going to remain where it is. People are going to be questioning, you know, why rates are going down the way they are, what it's, that means for yeah. the economy and the long-term picture. It's definitely an evolution of the thesis. I mean, I think that falling rates is bullish for stocks in the sense that there's TINA, right? Because there is no other alternative. U.S. yields are still high. Equity TINA is going to look good. So it helps large cap and asset light, asset light stocks over asset heavy. But you're right. It's not as positive a scenario as reflation and, you know, the Fed is forced to raise rates. So you talk about how low rates can go. And Aaron Pimko, with their note that's getting a lot of talk on the street today, not absurd to think that nominal U.S. yields could go negative. Yeah, that, so, that's where we are. So I think, so first to respond to Tom's comment really quickly, I, there, the, the point about there being no alternative, we, since the Fed eased at the end of July, we've actually had financial condition tightening. And so despite the fact that yields are moving lower, it's happening against a, back, a growth backdrop that's also weakening. And so you're not really getting that lift or that benefit that you would if financial conditions were easing and the economy was stable or growing. And then with regards to the view on long-term interest rates, the comment about rates going below zero, I mean, I think that that is a view towards if we are, go into a recession, which we don't expect over the next year. But we do think that during the next recession, we will have clearly real rates, you know, firmly below zero. And we will have nominal yields also approaching, you know, the lower zero bound as well. And I think the point to make right now that's important is when you look at the U.S. vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world, U.S. yields are still, you know, at one and a half percent. You actually can get some yield in, in buying U.S. yields. When you look at even Italy or Germany, we were talking about it on the desk earlier, you're getting significantly lower yields. And so the U.S. is still seen as a place where it pays to be long duration.